don't think, given what we saw from the Spark today, I don't think the NYXL is going to be giving them that much of an allowance, that many free picks this time around. NYXL here having just such good control of space, knowing when to, you know, really hit that speed boost and go in. If they're losing the trades in terms of right clicks coming out from the Zarya, damage coming out from the opponent's Zenyatta, they back away, they heal up, they re-engage. All the while, Jonak is doing damage at range. That's why Jonak is really one of the key players on this team. It's not just because he gets the kills, but it's actually because he does that consistent damage output while the team is getting ready to press that go button. That lower third stat is just disgusting. I'll let you guys read it yourselves, but uh, truly impressive stuff from the NYXL. Now gonna be wrapping around. And right hand set, nice boop there from Boink. Tries to shift them back in the focus of the focus of the Houston Outlaws, but they couldn't quite get the damage in to pick anybody off. All right, see, this is what Excelsior does best. They see a, a trap set, they see a risk, they don't take it, they back away, go for a safer attack. Push their way up here, across the bridge. Spree getting a couple boops, trying to displace them, but they're so tight-knit, they're able to stay together as a solid unit. Now they go forward, get the sun there on the Muma, take him down, Spree's gonna be losing the mech. And with point gone, this is just gonna be point A, going over to New York Excelsior. Just shy of seven minutes about to be in that time bank. We talk about worst case scenarios a lot here when a match is this one-sided, but New York Excelsior nearly have the big six online. Yep. So the double cap here feels almost inevitable. At least Rockus was able to do a massive amount of damage in that fight, so the Transcendence will be ready without that. This is for sure a double cap. So they've got one sh chance to shut this push down and stabilize, but it's not going to be easy. It's all on Rockus to hit that trance at the right time. Now that aura spree to deny away this Graviton Surge. Don't believe he's really gotten much taken away so far, whereas Mecco has been very on point tonight. Here's the go button. They press the way it. forward with a rally out from Libero Muma. Just gonna get shredded down. Absolutely rip him to bits. Transcendence out from Raucus, trying to keep everybody else alive, but now the grab comes in, locks up he and Jake. They will get taken down. Spree's gonna get knocked out of that mech. Doesn't get to use that self-destruct to get back in. And now New York Excelsior have the point to themselves. We'll start ticking this one up. Point trying to buy a little bit more time, but gets beamed down by Nene. It's a lose-lose situation for the Outlaws here. They didn't have the energy they needed. They had to trance. Can they even step up? No, they cannot. They had to use the Transcendence to save Muma. But if they did, it's a catch-22. Then the grab comes out afterwards, and they do not have the answering heals. Very nice attack here for the Excelsior on A. They steamroll it into B. Yeah, 551 remaining. Record pace here for NYXL. Let's see if Houston Outlaws can bounce back. Five minutes and 51 seconds established by NYXL here at the start of Temple of Anubis. And I mean, if history repeats itself, if we see a Hollywood situation again here, Wolf, it could just be one of the fastest series that we have ever seen in the Overwatch League, both in the inaugural and the 2019 season thus far. There's a full hold, another one. We'll just close it out. 3-0 victory for NY. So the second fastest attack on Anubis, a record currently hold, I believe, by the Vancouver Titans, just three seconds faster. And it was the delay we saw from the Excelsior here around this position that actually led them to get that set up, that attack, that come through, split the Outlaws up, win that fight without ultimates. We do see the Outlaws are gonna pull out Dante's Tracer. This has been some, some of the things that Outlaws fans have been waiting for is a good Tracer player on Houston. It's Jake on the far. This combo's worked well for them before, but as soon as they see the defensive setup, they will just simply swap it away. Crucial time lost here for the Outlaws. I'm just letting the fans, give their, uh, the fans here in the studio give their opinion. Well, you know, you want your team to win, right? They're gonna have to play what's meta. That's very true. They need that positive energy. You gotta give them some cheers if you wanna see the Outlaws come up with a victory. There they go. There you go. 
And back in place. Dante gonna get chipped out a little bit, but so far Houston Outlaws, again, able to stay together like we saw from New York on this approach yeah. thus far. New York split up in several different angles here. They're gonna have to drop down from this high ground here, but look at the damage they Ooh. do while they do so. Mono controls this choke alone. He is literally alone with a bubble on him. He's also at the same time building energy for Nene while doing so. Great zoning here by the Excelsior. Well, now it's gonna be a pushover onto the bridge. He's looking for Raucus. Looking quite low. Now the Primal Rage is going to be coming out. Oh, finds the isolation there. Onto the Zenyatta is going to be pushing forward. Sorry, a bubble. Hoping to try to keep him alive, but now he finds himself in a corner with an angry scientist and will be taken down. Just like that. They have to reset and go again. This is really, I feel like, not the Outlaws losing this series, but rather the Excelsior absolutely winning it. I yes. mean, they are just ahead in every regard, and they are outplaying the maneuvers the Outlaws are running through with. And it's not even bad plays by the Outlaws, it's just super calculated defenses. The bubble mono there to hold the choke to build the ult there. And look at Nanny, he sits at 81%. He's pretty decently high on energy as well, you have to imagine. Look at this choke control once again from Mono. Now they're gonna wrap around. He jumps up, and it all happens once again. Yep, he'll be ready to rejoin here on that mid-ground. He can use his Down jump. away at them. For extra damage, there's the bubble. Jake slowly trying to build back up that HP. Mono goes right up onto the high ground to keep himself safe. Houston Outlaws, finally, getting a taste for the point. First tick's gonna be coming through. Just under two minutes remaining on the clock. Raucus manages to find Jonak. That's a massive pickoff here for Houston. Nearly to that second tick, moving their way up again. Will be coming through. New York Excelsior hit the go button. They drop down. And sentences down from Rock is trying to keep them alive. Point will be taken out, but he offered up the sound barrier for the remainder of his team before he died. To try to give them a leg to stand on. Primal Rage out from Mono again. Comes up with a kill on the Jake dropping back in. Now gonna be looking for Dante. Zaps his way away. Will be able to scoop up those kills. So two ticks gain. Houston Outlaws still. Very much a chance to try to get that completion on B, to try they, to get this completion first on A. They all that time bank up. They all stepped off the point two to chase the outlaws, with the exception of one hero who's rotating between Mono, Nene, and Anamo, who's making sure that the capture isn't done. So the team is split up. The outlaws need to stick to the point to complete it. But Excelsior uses that that you know rotation in and out, kind of abuses that mechanic to win that trade. And Mono again controls the choke with the bubble on. This has been systematically repeated by this Winston player, where he prevents anyone from coming in without taking massive damage while also at the same time simultaneously building his ult and Nene's energy. It's an insane play by the Excelsior. They just keep rotating around. And I love Jonak, you know, he's adapting. He's not sticking his head out there so Raucus can take it off again. He's trying to play in behind the shield of Libero. In onto the point though, nearly get the cap on to A. Echo going low, manages to boost his way back up to the top. Mono. Manages to get rid of Muma, so no main tank. Grab comes in, rocking him into the wall. Jake gonna be taken down. Rockets finds Jonak again, but with the loss of their main tank, it might not be enough. Grab comes in, the bomb has to be big. Manages to get an ammo, but Spree cannot make it back into the mech. Does it get rid of Mechos? But Mecho goes back in, just gets rid of Boink with the pilot pistol. Muma rejoins to try to force out the OT. Will be able to do so, but it's just gonna tick down two ticks here on Temple of Anubis. It's as good as it got for the Houston Outlaws, and NYXL will close out this series with a 3-0. Escort still to be played. Systematic, it's terrifying what the NYXL are doing. They repeat, rinse and repeat the process and win the series. Fantastically done, Houston. Can they come up with a win on that final escort map to spare their flushes? We're just gonna have to wait and find out when we do come back from that break, but the pressure is